Hi everybody! I'm so excited. I'm getting Alex Morehouse in here, the goddess of community and inspiration. Can't wait! Hold on. Alex. Waiting. I can't wait, but I've been waiting all day. Just super exciting. <laughs> this is sitting here like wanting to go early. Okay. Let's see, waiting for Alex. Oh, yay, she's here. She's waving. Okay, hold on. So she was, I don't know, let's see. Do I need to invite you again? Okay, well, while we're waiting for her to join, um, she's the goddess of community and inspiration. She actually reached out to me to be on her IG live um, a while back for to speak to autoimmunity. And um, we talked about so many things. It was just like, it was such a good one. So if you haven't watched it, oh, I'm able to join. Hold on, let me try to invite her again. Oh, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Happy Thursday. You too. I'm so excited. Happy new moon, snow moon. <laughs> Ooh, see, I don't know as much about the moon, so I'm happy to be on here just to learn from you because you know more <laughs> about that stuff than I do. Yeah, so I was trying to do these on the different moon cycles, but the snow moon's coming up on the 27th. Of, so this is the new moon. It's like when the moon is dark, you know, it's like starting the cycle. But um, yeah. I just am so excited to talk to you. I um, really appreciated that you brought me on and talked on your IG live to talk about autoimmunity. And we ended up talking about so many different things and it was a blast. And look, I wanted to show you what I just got in the mail. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. I cannot wait to read it because that's like definitely one of my passions is helping people um, learn how to be a sage and an elder and feel like like how to do that in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s and not feel like you wasted time or that you don't have any wisdom to give you know I feel like so many times our, our um, especially women as they get into their 60s and 70s like our community our community in America just cast them aside and we don't look at them to be like teach me <laughs> you know totally totally yeah. I think a lot of society kind of um, puts a lot of emphasis on what this looks like. And as you get older, um, it's not as desirable, but we don't look inside and realize that these women have had 70, 80 years of walking this earth and experiencing all of these different things in relationships. So yeah, it's really interesting. That book is really cool because it correlates the like mythical archetypes of women from like way, way back in the Celtic sphere. And it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. I had no idea about so much of that book. And now I'm like moving up to the mountains by the end of the year, like reconnecting with nature. So that book will really, it'll really wake you up in a cool way. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to read it. But so I want to celebrate you today. And I kind of coined you as the goddess of community and, and um, inspiration. So hopefully you were okay with that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Okay. But you do so many things. Like, and I was doing my story about you. I'm like, so she does this, this, this. She's a triple, quadruple, I don't even octa, like octa, whatever threat. <laughs> so tell us about um, like all the different missions that you have and this track, like you're a CEO, you're a director, you're a model, you're an interior designer. Like how do you juggle all of these things and keep your creativity alive and, and passion flowing? Yeah, I mean, it's not easy. And I think, um, what I kind of consider myself is like a multifaceted creator because lots of what I'm doing is in the creative space, right? Modeling, photography, videography, production, like all of that is creative in some capacity. And I might be using different skills or um, different materials or whatnot, but it's all in that creative realm. So I, back in college, I went to school for fashion merchandising. I've always loved fashion. So I knew that's the direction I was gonna go. 
Then during my senior year, I started this international collective of creators and it started originally as a blog. Um, and then all of these amazing people started applying to work with us. And I was like, okay. And I saw that I was really pulling together a network and I know how powerful that is. So I didn't want to like turn all these people away because I couldn't work with all of them. So I kind of figured out like, what if we shift this blog to become a community for awesome network of vetted, really cool creators. So then it kind of opened up TGS Collective, which is one of my companies. And that's kind of like the overarching umbrella company. And in that we do events, we have workshops, we have online classes, retreats, just anything kind of catering to the things that I love to do with my creative friends at really beautiful places where we can create editorial or lifestyle or we don't really care because we're not taking pictures content. So it's just kind of putting ourselves in these really aspirational places so we can pull inspiration from them. Mm -hmm. um, that was all kind of under the TGS branch. And then through working with amazing creators, seeing hundreds of thousands of portfolios when people apply to join, I decided that I wanted to create a print magazine because I missed seeing stuff in print versus just on a screen. Like, mm -hmm. yes, really hard for those photos just to get a double tap, I don't think so. Like, I want that living on someone's shelf. I want them to be able to open it and stare at it for hours if they want to. So we launched the magazine, and that's not like a huge profit turner. I won't say, like, print is dead, but it's not like making money like it used to. But for me, it was just a really cool personal project where people could tangibly see their work, like, in large format, gorgeous, full-color prints. And so I just knew that it was something that I had to do. And then Archive kind of gave us this interesting in with these amazing PR people and awesome celebrities. And we got to start choosing really cool creators who we wanted to interview and feature and have on. So Kaylin Allen from The Ellen Show, he does these hilarious YouTube food reviews. He was a riot to have him on. And he's releasing music and producing all these cool things. And he came on and we talked about the Black Lives Matter movement. And he was very open and vulnerable about his position being in the LGBTQIA plus community as a black queer man. And so it was just this, this really cool opportunity where I could connect with people in a much different capacity than I normally could just reaching out. And I could like shed light and allow them to tell their story and create a beautiful visual narrative and then let it live in a gorgeous book that I can look at forever. So all of that kind of stemmed from me just wanting to be creative, right? And trying figure out ways to make money. Like how do creators make money? Cause we're starving. So that's a big thing through TGS is we're wanting to break the stigma of the starving artist. Cause I think that's bullshit. So we're doing events and we're empowering people and getting them to beef up their portfolios and doing retreats. So we can critique portfolios and build portfolios. And I'm just trying to empower creators because I wish there was something like that for me when I was kind of starting out and I wanted a safe space. We're kind of, all are welcome to come learn and grow. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of where I started building my own freelance skills. So I couldn't always hire a photographer for the events. It's kind of expensive for a small business. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn to take photos. So I went on Groupon, got a Canon T Rebel 6 for $300, and it came with a Canon printer. Nice. <laughs> shooting with just so I could get BTS for my own company, right? So that if I'm trying to promote an event, I can show people like, here's what our event looks like. You can't just take my word for it. Like, it's going to be fun. There's going to be networking. Like, what does it look like? Especially with Instagram and all of this other stuff becoming so prevalent. So I picked up photography and it has video capability. So I started playing with video and then I started actually getting paid work and building up my entire portfolio strictly from events that I was doing for TGS for other people to build their portfolios. So I was using all the opportunities I was creating for everybody and building myself up along the way. And then it just started kind of outsourcing and we got, um, we got a office base in downtown LA for TGS and that was like a big thing. And I met some really amazing people. I met this awesome production company beyond the porch and they connected me. We went to Sundance together and then I met Canon and then Canon became a client of all, like all this crazy stuff started coming Ah, yeah, but it was, I was just trying to connect with as many amazing creators as I could. So I do a lot of different things, but they all kind of fall under the same umbrella. So I'm not sitting here looking at my calendar thinking, okay, have I done any photography? Okay, have I done any video? It's 
okay, what have I done for TGS? Do we have events that we need to plan? Is there something I'm wanting to create personally? Is there a concept that's been buzzing around in my head? No, okay, let's switch over to archive. Do we have all the web tutorials going live? We're on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday publish schedule, and then we're on a quarterly print schedule, so everything is good there. Let me see if there's new submissions. Archive is good. And then I took on Arbon. So cool. Let's check on Arbon. How are my clients? So I just have to kind of compartmentalize and do little check ins. And I live in my planner. <laughs> yeah. Book. But it's, it's doable. And sometimes I'm not leaning into one as hard as the other. Like sometimes I'll go a few weeks shooting. And then something comes to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, the spoken word will come to me and then I'll record it. And then I have to get, you know, so, so I just kind of lean into what really speaks to me. I get the done that I have to get done but if I'm really leaning into something and something's really calling to me I just have to lean into it because there's a reason and it's taken me a few years like three and a half years of juggling all of this stuff to kind <laughs> of figure out Alex just lean in <laughs> mm -hmm. go and lean in and it's hard because for years I wasn't doing that so it was a lot of like fighting trying to find that rigid structure but as soon as I kind of started relaxing and just allowing things to lead me like everything is going to get done mm-hmm Okay, there was so much awesomeness there, and I have several questions to unpack for you. <laughs> um, one is, I'm curious, did you always come to this from a place of abundance and thrive mode, and, or did you ever feel like, you know, not confident, or did you just always feel like, I'm giving to the universe, the universe is going to give back to me, and I can do all this, because it sounds like you just started this, and you did whatever it took, like you bought that camera, and you know, you're like, I'm going to try it, and then things just started like compounding and getting, you know, coming to you, so I'm wondering if you always came from a place of thrive, or if you were ever in a place of survive? Both, extreme mm -hmm. both, <laughs> I'm a very extreme person, and it like gives me whiplash, that's why I will have like, I'll be going, 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 then there's one day I'm down. And then I'm back and then we're going. So I was raised in a really, really amazing family who was so supportive of anything that I did. They were all entrepreneurs. They all had their own businesses. So I was raised thinking, what am I gonna start? It was never a concept of where am I gonna work? What company would I want to join? What, you know, it was, I'm gonna create something because that's what we do. Right. So that my reality um but there were hard times as well financially my dad um my parents were divorced my dad was a paramedic and he was like had his side businesses and it wasn't like we were rolling in money though we did have on my mom's side a little bit more comfort when it came to monetary things um so i kind of again was living in this world of kind of contrasting like comfort but also survival so then when i launched the company i was during I was in college, so it was during my senior year, and I was very blessed that my grandpa covered college and covered housing during that time. That gave me a huge advantage, and I love to point that out because a lot of people like to compare their story, and I was very, very, very blessed to have grandparents that covered all of that. It allowed my full-time job that I was working to be 100% poured into my business. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has that advantage, so that kind of gave me this opportunity to like go all in. Right. And I had the support and I knew I was kind of safe. So I just went for it. And then I moved out to LA and I quit my job and I got an apart or I got our first office space downtown for TGS. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't have any money coming in. I have an apartment I have to pay for. And now I have an office in downtown LA plus parking that I have to pay for. Let's but make you also it. have to create. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. I have to create. So yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to put myself between the rock and the hard place though, because I was working that full-time job, pouring all my money into TGS and I was living comfortably. Then I graduated and I realized we've got to step it up a notch. And so I kind of did like a transition job and I was nannying for someone in Santa Monica that got me out in Santa Monica a little bit more Then I quit that. And we made the move and um, yeah, it was terrifying. It was absolutely fucking terrifying every month because I'm looking at the numbers and I'm thinking, okay, we need another event on the book so I can at least make sure that X amount is covered, you know, all these things. And then of course, once we have the office space, our operational costs increase automatically. We also needed like a computer for all the photos and the video and we needed external hard drives and all this other stuff started kind of building. So we started to have to make a lot more money. Not like we were bringing in like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but enough to cover one of our WeWork spaces and all of these other things that you kind of have to pay for. So if it was constant, like 
this is going to be okay. We have to trust the process. And holy shit, are we doing this? Should we stop now? Should we call it all off? No. We, so it's kind of the back and forth, which I think has, has kept me thriving has kept me kind of like in the state of realism because things aren't always gung-ho yes the universe is listening but things aren't always like oh no watch everything watch your like people are gonna steal you don't have to be in that that fear mode either <laughs> so i do love to occasionally put myself between a rock and a hard place just to remind myself that like we've still got to work because if yeah. you get comfortable you plateau but I do try to keep that optimism of like, we're going to hustle and work and we've got to do things because yikes don't look back, but we know that we're going to the top. We know mm -hmm. that we're going to ascend and bring more people with us and make something that's big and amazing. So we do have that fear kind of pushing acting as motivation. And sometimes I fall into it, but then I snap right back out. So to answer your question, both. <laughs> Well, I think you're amazing. And that's so I love hearing that I love hearing that, that you had the balance between the thrive and the survive and that you consistently kind of when you recognize that things are in flow, that you kind of just put a little, you know, stab and not get too comfortable to all, and I'm sure that helps you stay in the creative as well, right? Um, how did that affect your health? If you don't mind me asking? I mean, obviously, I'm the gut goddess. And one of my passions is helping, um, you know, I mean, everybody, but especially people in that like 20 to 35 age range of I have a career, I have relationships, I have a life, I have all these things going. And I'm, you know, getting anxious and stressed and my you know, I'm having gut issues now, I'm having brain issues. And like, how do I help you be successful in midst of having to deal with all the things that's happening in life. And so you have so many things going on. And I know that you went through a lot of healthy living um, with Arvon, right, that you're part of. And I like I said, I appreciate you bringing me on and you brought a lot of, a lot of other experts on. So I'm just wondering, what are the biggest lessons you learned from um, shifting into that health space? And is that something you felt like you needed to do? Or you wanted to do? and how has it affected you in balancing all of your careers currently? Yeah, um, I was raised in a healthy family. My parents had a holistic wellness center, like they did quantum biofeedback. Like these people were like, cool. I thought they were nuts, but they were really cool. They were ahead of their time in a tiny mountain town. So I felt like we were very out of place and like no one else in the world did this. So I was like, you guys are crazy. But we had healthy upbringing, but I think a lot of, women and men growing up play comparison game. So I always had somewhat unhealthy relationships with my body and exercise. I never had an eating disorder per se, but I would excessively work out or I would just overly think about food in an unhealthy capacity. So when I went to college, it just really expanded upon that. And I came from a 10,000 person county where I was raised to Cal State Long Beach, which has 30,000 people on the campus. Mm -hmm looking around and there's all these beautiful, amazing people. And I just started comparing and I started falling into Instagram at the time. There was a lot of tea talks fads, a lot of the queen bee tea talks and all of these things talking about heavily influencing celebrities as well, influence, influencing weight loss. Yeah. So I really leaned into that and I actually overdosed on weight loss meds freshman year of college. I had to go to the hospital cause I was throwing up 14 times. My body was trying to spell it. I didn't tell the doctors what I did because I'd taken a handful, handful of the green tea bowls and I was like, they're going to think I'm fucking nuts. So I just said, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I think it's a migraine. They've prescribed me migraine medication and sent me home. And I had the realization that I wasn't quite cut out for like the modeling world, which was what I was trying to really lean into as a freshman out near LA doing that whole thing. And so that kind of caused me to really step back and um, reevaluate where I was at. And so I did start eating a lot healthier throughout college and I'd go to the gym in a much healthier capacity. And I did do like the whole freshman, sophomore, 15, 20 gain, which like my roommate was stuffing me full of mac and cheese, but it was a great time. So I'm not mad. But then I kind of, once TGS really started picking up, that's when I really stopped paying attention to food and making sure that I was consistently eating. Um, when we were really tight on money, when I was like literally budgeting down to like the $70 grocery every two weeks, when I was like 
had just quit my job, had just gotten the office. Then I was being a little bit better because I was so rationing out how money was being spent and what food I was buying. I was bringing snacks and lunch to work so I wouldn't go out and buy lunch with other people. So I was being a little bit better there. Um, but I'd say the last couple of years, probably with my fiance and I moved in together. We were dating at the time. Um, we moved here to Long Beach and we just love food and we love going out and trying restaurants local business but I started treating eating out like it always had to be a treat and like I was feeding my tongue not my body so it kind of got really unhealthy and then I really started leaning into TGS much more hardcore and then it was a coffee in the morning and then I wouldn't eat lunch and then I'd eat dinner at about eight o'clock so most of my calories would be consumed after 8 p.m. so it it started to get worse and worse and worse and then quarantine happened and then I was like eating a ton of bread and baking bread and cookies and drinking wine and I didn't even like wine but I'd buy a bunch of wine and so I just wasn't feeling good and I was like this is not like this is not sustainable and this is not when we start a family because we knew we were gonna get engaged and get married and have kids hopefully in the next few years um I didn't want to have to like halt my life and change it when we found out, oh, we're pregnant. It's like, ah, okay, let's change everything. So I just wanted to kind of be ahead of the curve. So that's kind of what started us looking at, and he was already a lot healthier than me. It's mostly me when I say we, me. I love cake and I love, I love all that bad stuff. So it was a big shift and that was in June. So that was eight or nine months now when I kind of did the Arbonne 30 Days of Healthy Living when you cut out the soy, gluten, all those things. But you don't have to keep eating like that. It's just kind of finding what does and doesn't serve your body. And I found that I was stuffing myself full of a lot of things that weren't serving my body. So kind of leaning into that, it was out of necessity. And then it was kind of a blessing that I've been able to work it in as a business as well on the side because my event business during 2020 took a bit of a hit, let me tell you. So it kind of became this amazing supplemental opportunity that came alongside, but I definitely got involved from that get-go just because I realized I needed to change. I'd been probably since 17 treating my body fairly unhealthily on and off, on and off, and there was nothing sustainable or nourishing. It was just me trying to survive and fit into a mold that I had to fit into in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're getting lots of love in the comments. People are saying thank you so much for sharing that and liking. Things. So I think that's really special. Um, so doing this 30 days and then all of the different specialists that you interviewed, is there any like common theme or anything that really hit home with you that you were excited about? I think what I love about most of it is like lots of you guys say like, stop paying attention to the fad diets like it's not a one size fits all and I think that's so powerful because everyone's looking for that magic fix or that magic like cool if we cut out all carbs and all like yeah no so I think that's really important because all of the amazing people who I've had on who are holistic nutritionists or autoimmune specialists or what have you come with knowledge certifiable knowledge like they're legit people who are doing this not just like someone who loves nutrition and i off the street so it's been cool for me to like have all these people and hear lots of them say different but similar things but it's all like everybody is different and I think that's so beautiful and unique and I love that everyone who I've had on has emphasized that because not everybody in the medical world leans into that you know so I think that's important yeah um, well, I want to share some of the messages that you have as a goddess. And I really feel like I know that you're on, I think you're on Clubhouse. I think I started following you, but I want to do some Clubhouse rooms too and do like goddess circles and have all the goddesses and their messages on. And um, let's see. So I'm going to read some of these because there's so many. But you, your messages are, um, let's see, you feel most in your power and inspired when you're cultivating community and sharing stories for all to learn and grow, which is so sweet. Um, you're empowered enough fire when you're leading a small retreat and like-minded people and I, I loved that like you talked about your retreats I want to know more about that too um, and you love being surrounded by people who yearn for more and then together create abundance and beauty and that you like to guide young creators and artists to recognize their own talent and power to thrive and that is just like that is such a goddess vibe. Like, let me, you know, help other people come into their power and their creativity. And I just want to thank you for being there for everyone and inspiring so many people and also for connecting. Like you really did do a connection for me. Actually, she was on here. I'm not sure if she's still on here, but one of my current clients I got through um, 
connecting with you and on the Instagram live. And it's been so beautiful and she's doing amazing. And I just really feel like that's a little, you know, check you get to put in another check in your toolbox of, of connecting people and bringing, um, oh, she's on here. She says, I am. <laughs> and so that's been really wonderful. And I just wanted to say thank you. And I think that that's part of your mission and you are doing it. And that's wonderful. Um, let's see. You also message remind us that we should not allow other, others' opinions to shape our own oh. in our decisions right? Um, <laughs> and we should chase our dreams that need to be chasing and that we know what's best for us. So trust your intuition and listen to your heart. So give us a little more on those messages. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's really easy and I fall, I fall into this too, but I think it's really easy to kind of chase after what we think we need to be doing. I feel like I've been definitely seeing that a lot now that we're like getting engaged and getting married and there's kind of like an order and way like that you do things, right? And then you honeymoon and buy the house and have the kid and do all these things. And it's been interesting because it's given us this kind of opportunity to step, at, step back and look at it and be like, okay, so do we want to do all of these things? And like, if so, awesome. But like, is that what we want to do? So I think that's been kind of special is like just really figuring out what we want to do. Like, what is our dream? And can we like manifest that and talk about it and breathe it into existence and, you know, do that whole, that whole shabattle. But <laughs> I think it's just, there's, there's lots of little tidbits, I guess, that I gave another one that kind of stood out was like not allowing others opinions to influence you. And that's like really hard. And that's something that I battle with all the time, girl, I'm in an MLM. It is not easy out here, you know, <laughs> and my parents were in it. Too. I knew it was part of it. But still, you know, it's, it's not, it's not always easy. And when people do have disagreements or come at you harshly, because they've had a bad experience. I've had that experience with my dad, he had a really bad experience with MLMs. And we had like an interesting conversation. And then I actually had the same experience with a different one. And I was like, oh my God, I get it now. Like I get, I get the fear. So it really gave us this awesome opportunity to like connect and for me to be like, I hear you. Like I, I hear you loud and clear, but still, even in your family, and that could be in any business. If you're starting out as an entrepreneur or a creator, there's going to be people in your family who are not supportive or they're going to question and say, can you really make money doing that? You're mm -hmm. telling me help people with their health, they go to doctors for that, you know, so there's always going to be people who, whether they're masking it, saying, I'm doing this for you, I want you to make sure you know what I mean. It's lots of projection and fear. So whatever those people are saying, most of the time, it's with good intention, because they've had some kind of experience that didn't go well. And they're kind of trying to warn you. That's what I try to tell myself in those moments. But it takes a few minutes for me to register, you know, because it is hard when people when people give opinions that maybe don't match with yours. So that's something that I'm constantly, I think we all are constantly learning to just like really trust what we feel in our gut and know that that for that time, what, what we need to be doing. Yeah. You got to trust your gut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for real? Yeah. <laughs> Actually what you just said, and there's somebody on the call that um, her and I were or on the call on the live that we were just talking about this that's in tune with that that was so funny because I was telling her something and she said okay what's the word for what you're doing I think it's called projecting and so I said yeah I need to start connecting and stop projecting <laughs> it's hard it's really hard I work on the last my whole life let's be honest my whole life is one of my first emotional responses to things is anger which does not feel good for anybody in my space. You know, like that's not fun for me to feel because I feel like a crazy person. Nobody else feels good. So that's something that I've really had to kind of work on as well is like when there's something that maybe doesn't resonate or doesn't make me super happy, like how am I responding? And like, can I take a step back and just be like, whew, where are they coming from? So that's been a big thing <laughs> that I've <laughs> And my poor mom growing up, boy, did she help me kind of work through the kinks. But that woman, she yeah. took verbal abuse for me because I would be mean. And she would be like, Alex, your words are like daggers. Like, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. And that was seared in my mind, obviously. But that's something that I still carry with me because that was, that was one of my greatest um, kind of shortcomings. And I think one of my strengths also is the ability to speak passionately. But like your greatest strengths amplified can become your weakness. Absolutely. And it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get that. So tell me, oh, congratulations, by the way. I forgot to congratulate. When's your wedding? In two months, April 3rd. Oh, 
Yeah. Right? April 30th, you said? April 3rd. Oh, April 3rd. April 3rd. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And are you like all set with your wedding plans? Pretty much. I've got my dress. We just got his suit today. Um, we're just going to pop up on the cliffs for 25 minutes. We have my amazing mentor slash like life coach. She's actually going to marry us and she was raised out in Palos Verdes. So it's going to be really beautiful. Yeah, everything's kind of set. Fingers crossed we can still go to Hawaii. <laughs> What happens with travel? We got insurance on the flights, but <laughs> nice. I'm sure you can. It's gonna work out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm quarantine there, so I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just stay there for a little bit. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I can't wait to see pictures and and just feel like send you good vibes, more Thanks. good vibes. Okay. So tell us just every at the end of these, I've been doing kind of a goddess wrap up, <laughs> and and giving everybody watching, even in the replay, an action item from each goddess. You know. So, um, what would you say if you had to give like one specific message, an action item coming from all of your experience, all of your lessons, all of your vibes? You know, being um, the goddess of you know, inspiration and community that you could give to our listeners? Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. That fits in any category, right? Like if you're thinking about, oh, should I reach out to so-and-so? She'd be a great person to have a, con a conversation with. Just do it. Mm -hmm. The worst things that happens is she says no, and then you're back at square one and you can think of somebody else. Or if you have like a business idea, like I'm not like literally go make a business, but at least like go write down your concept and like put pen to paper and like put it somewhere. And then if you come back to it the next day and you're like, yeah, this kind of resonates. Let's start researching how to start a business. It's not super expensive to get a DBA. No. It's hundreds of dollars to start a business. So like it's something that is doable. Or if it's a conversation that you've been putting off with a loved one, just do it. Like make that phone call, send that text, email, whatever that is. Um, I think sometimes we get really in our heads about everything and what it really comes down to is like this present moment. And we really like about the future and all the stuff ahead, but like we can only do what we can do right now. And lots of the things on my to-do list that I put off for like more, longer than I should admit end up taking five minutes when I really sit down. Yep. It's just in my head. I make it this big thing because it's a legal document when in reality it's one link on Google that takes me directly to the document and I print it out, you know? So <laughs> I think the biggest thing that's advice that I need to take from myself, like not just daily, but like multiple times a day is just like if something is crossing your mind or pressing on your heart at that specific moment, it's probably there for a reason. And if it comes back and is reminding you a second or third time, then you better really run and do it because it's like knocking at the door trying to get your attention. So just do it. And like, if you have a trusted friend or something like that, when it comes to an idea or business idea or creative, like bounce it on them and see what they think. And if they're like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe don't do it. <laughs> but if there is something there and they love it. Then you have that kind of that affirmation that there's something here. So maybe, maybe you need that, but just do it. And you don't have to show everybody. If you do something and it turns out horrible, you don't have to post it. Like nobody is saying, Hey, did you ever paint that painting? Let me see. Like you don't, have to put things out and I forget that all the time as a content creator I think that every piece has to be magic and every piece has to be viral content that's just not realistic and that's really high expectations mm -hmm. to put on yourself so just do it whatever it is that you're wanting to do or you're afraid to do but you know you need to do just do it yeah and I love I love that message and I think that is so good um, some of the other people that I featured that are creatives you know they say the same thing it's just like just put yourself out there and try to separate from the expectations or from what you think that they're going to think or say because it's your expression. But even for me or for the people that are also listening that are entrepreneurs or have all these things that they want to do, this is, there's no other time than now. Like this is the best time where I think so many things are more accepted and, and it's being creative in any capacity is what where it's at right now <laughs> especially like that's one of the things COVID taught us right like that's one of the things that I think we all learned in 2020 is community matters time is precious you know you can always get money you can always get other things but you can't get your time back like yeah. time is the only resource you cannot renew and so don't be scared don't keep waiting right like just do it so I love that um 
Thank you so much, Alex. And I'm so happy that we connected and that you um, are now my Instagram friend. <laughs> I'm <laughs> friend. Yeah. And then we're going to, I want to do a room on Clubhouse. Seriously. Like, oh, so down. Yeah. Well, yeah. I really appreciate you and I love your message. And thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you holding space for people because I think this is really special. Like creating a cool space like this, you already know. But it's really magic that we're able to do this. So thank you for bringing me on and sharing with me. Yes, my pleasure. And congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And for the, and for the book recommendation. Oh, you're going to love it. You have to let me know what you think of it. Oh, I'm sure I'm going to be sending you highlights. I mean, like, did, did you do you remember this? Did you read this? Do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we're going to be sages. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Heidi, love. Have an amazing night. Bye.